Here in Keenan Stadium, I'm Ross Martin with Inside Carolina, joined by Adam Smith of Inside Carolina. UNC defeats Miami 27-24, and now it's 2-0 in the Coastal, 2-0 in the ACC, and 5-1 and heading into a showdown with Duke. Adam, we just talked to Mac Brown, Phil Longo, and Gene Chizik for a good hour and a half. Um, what do you think the general mood is with this team now? A lot different than after Notre Dame. It is a lot different after Notre Dame, and it's it's sort of a continuation of how it felt after they beat Virginia Tech, uh, after beat, after losing to Notre Dame. It's it's you know they're sort of building here. You know they, you can feel like they're putting the, the pieces in place, and they're going you know step by step. It seems like, and you know Duke's next, uh, and then they catch a they catch the second bye week. So you know Mac has talked about breaking the season down into parts, three different parts, with the different bye weeks that they've had, and you know, starting the season on week zero. So they have this, the Duke game is the last segment of this part before they get into the final segment of their season. That's right. And a big thing entering the Miami game was run defense and running the ball better. I thought against Miami, obviously they held the Hurricanes to 41 yards rushing on they 23 did. carries, seven yards in the second half. And it felt like they ran the ball a little bit better with Caleb Hood. Run defense, your takeaway about what Gene Chizik, Mac Brown said about that part side of the ball? How? How insane is it to to only give up seven yards in the second half, yeah. Ross? I mean, that's – Six carries, though. It's true. But, I mean, geez, Louise. Uh, well, yeah, like, uh, you know, I think that uh, what Max said uh, – Max said we wanted something or we needed something to be good in, mm-hmm. in terms of their defense and how – the disarray that was at the beginning of the season and, you know, they're grasping for something to hold on to. And, and for two games now – They've been able to shut down two opponents on the ground. Virginia Tech did not run for 100 yards in here uh, a couple weeks ago, and UNC won handily. Miami could not get a running game going now. Yes, Tyler Van Dyke threw for 496 yards. Mac pointed out if you had to give up one thing, it's better to give up passing yards than running yards. So, um, you know, that's, that, that is an area that this UNC defense – has been able to show considerable improvement. Mm-hmm. You know, you saw how Notre Dame came in here and shoved the ball down their thro- throats a couple weeks ago, and that's an area that they've made strides, definitely. Yep. It's definitely like a confidence booster. Like, whether, that, whether or not Miami or Virginia Tech are that good, it's a huge <laughs> confidence boost for the team and the defense to prove they can go out and do it and stop the run, even without Rava Hasek. Some injury news yeah. now. They're going to be without Don Chapman, Rava Hasek for the Duke game, um, Ra Ra Dilworth, and... Uh, William, Barnes. William, Barnes William Barnes are going to be evaluated, evaluated throughout the week. Um, but a big note from Mac was they played 12 defensive linemen, including the jack position, against uh, Miami. So you had you know all the different jacks in there, Malachi Hamrick, Noah Taylor, Chris Collins. You saw Keyshawn Silver, Travis Shaw, Kedrick Bingley-Jones. I mean, they ran in almost every scholarship defensive Foley lineman. Cowan, yeah. Yeah. So it just shows they're, they're building confidence, they're building depth. And it was interesting, Mac said – uh, giving them playing time and giving them a couple snaps makes them practice harder, which I thought was interesting. Well, he said, you know, well, think about it just from a per, from your from a personal standpoint. He said, you know, if you play Keyshawn Silver ten snaps, or KBJ or Jacoby Cowan, and they go in there and get half a sack or do something, you know, it's it's like the ultimate positive reinforcement because yeah. you've gotten off the bench, mm-hmm. you've been in there, and he said, then then you walk into the meeting room with a smile, yeah. you know, and like it it makes sense, you know. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> Matt keeps bringing up the humidity in Miami, but they, they <laughs> felt, like, he, man, you felt know? like they needed to play a little bit more down there with the, the humidity and thickness in the weather uh, <laughs> down there in South Beach. Uh, the run game for UNC, it seems like it's Caleb Hood and Amari and Hampton, and it seems like Hood has the edge as a more efficient runner for UNC right now. Caleb Hood, has, we, as we talked about Saturday when we were in the post game uh, at Hard Rock Stadium, Caleb Hood has had games where he's run for more yards. I think he had 87 at App State. But I felt like it was, you know, it wasn't a dominant game from Caleb Hood at Miami, but it was, it was a, a complete game in that he, he led them in rushing yards. Five catches out of the backfield. I think that's more than he's ever had. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, they use him. He got like 18 touches. And, uh, I mean, I, I know we joked today with Mac that, that Ricky Williams isn't walking through the door anymore like they had at Texas. But, you know, I think that's how Phil Longo and this offense would like to use the backs. You know, you get them involved running the ball and out of the backfield. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like Caleb Hood is coming off um, – Maybe his best game, maybe his most complete game. And Mac made the point today: Hey, you got to stay healthy, though. All the 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 ways he's been banged up and 
Yeah. yeah. I mean, it seems like they're rolling with those two, and that's good to know. And it does seem like Caleb Hood's a more productive back. Otherwise, on, on defense, they're finally getting some playmakers. You know, John Andre Borkins named ACC Defensive Back of the Week right. with a big interception. You know, Kay, uh, um, the linebacker, Cedric Gray, the name almost escaped me there. You know, he is all the field, and Gene Chizik and Mac Brown rave about him and Power Eccles. Yeah. You know, the, the tackle to keep the player in bounds with 22 seconds left the forced fumble, Cedric Gray is becoming kind of the man for UNC on defense. He is. Don't feel bad. I always want to call Caleb Hood Caleb, Caleb Love. Yeah. You know, I, it's just love comes out of my mouth, I guess, uh, all, all too much. But, um, yeah, DeAndre Boykins, what, is, what did Cedric Gray say to us? Called a junkyard day? dog. He did. He, he, that guy's a junkyard dog. Yeah. Uh, and I know people that vote on that, those awards, Ross. I know someone who voted for DeAndre Boykins. Um, but, yeah, I, I – the way it's looking there is that um, Boykins may be joining Power Eccles and Cedric Gray as playmakers for this defense. Because, I mean, those guys are making all the tackles. They're two of the top tacklers in the league and in the country. Um, but I think you're right. I think Cedric Gray and I think Power Eccles are the heart of a defense. A defense is designed for your linebackers to sort of be yeah. those guys who run to the ball, and they get there all the time. And Boykin's kind of also in the middle. You know, he's in the yeah. slot, has to make some tackles in the backfield, and has to play in that middle where Power Uckles and Cedric Gray roam. I think it was important that Mack and Chiswick both mentioned Desmond Evans having a pretty solid game despite a couple penalties. You know, he was making tackles in the run game. He was rushing the passer, and he's kind of developed that player that UNC really wants from him. He had a third down stop in the second half. They, they were, there were all those – I know that UNC – I think if you look at the the numbers, the total yards they gave up were were huge. But there were all those critical stops that at, UNC had in the second half at the right time. Yeah, it was the Boykin sack of Tyler Van Dyke mm-hmm. uh, on a fourth down in the second half, and there was a Des Evans. He made a stop on a third and short that forced Miami to punt when they were, I think, around midfield. So yeah, he was one of those guys that was were showing up in the big moments. Yeah, and so now UNC heads over to Duke. New coach Mike El- Elko has the Blue Devils playing pretty tough. He They're does. F- Four and two, mm-hmm. coming off a loss in Atlanta to the uh, now the two and zero oh ACC Georgia Tech two Yellow Jackets. Two and one, yeah. uh, Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets. Um, it's a big opportunity. It's a road game, but there should be a lot of Carolina Blue in Wallace Wade Stadium. A chance for UNC to go three and zero oh in the ACC and the ACC Coastal. Your thoughts, kind of heading into the matchup with the Blue Devils. I think that's an excellent point. Uh, and I think that's something I would like to get into later in the week with some of the things we write to preview the game. Is like UNC has a chance to improve to three and zero in the league, which you can't do any better than that. And they would be three and zero in the in, in the coastal division. You would have those games in the in the coastal division. If you think about the way last year went, obviously you opened the season zero and one, losing at Virginia Tech. It's like they could never sort of get themselves even in the league. You're zero and one, then you're one and one. You're one and two with that loss at Georgia Tech last year. Two and two, you know, like it was. They were always sort of having to climb. Um, and when you're talking about Duke, I mean, what Max said, there was only a thousand tickets left at Wallace Wade Stadium. Yeah. Do we think that's accurate? It must. Know. It must be. Um, but yeah, Saturday night on ACC Network over at Duke, uh, winner gets the victory bell as right. as the bell tower chimes here uh, in Chapel Hill. Yeah, it's a big one. Thoughts on the food we had in Miami, <laughs> and the nights, the the oh. South Beach visits. We went twice there. Is Ooh. is Miami the best city in the U.S.? I mean, I love the food. Thank you for for taking me to the different places that we went. The even the breakfast was great. I thought oh, breakfast, that was my favorite part. Yeah, and ah, uh, oh, I enjoyed it immensely. Uh, a lot of uh, café con leche, some monfongo, which is Puerto Rican. Um, that was we, in Little Havana. Yeah, and we went to a um, one restaurant twice, Café Versailles, per Jim Hawkins' recommendation. That's it for us. UNC moves to five and one overall, two and zero in the ACC. Heading into a matchup with the Blue Devils. For Inside Carolina, it's Adam Smith. I'm Ross Martin signing off from Keene Stadium.